All right, welcome back. Today I will be doing my Palantir Q1 earnings preview. I call it Palantir's Pivotal Q1 earnings release. Last time I did this was for Q4. I said the same thing and the stock pretty much did pivot down 25%. So we've got Palantir's earnings are coming up on May 9th, which is Monday, just in a few days at this point. So what matters? Well, in my opinion, there are a few key things that matter. The first is the growth, of course. We know Palantir's a growth company and little changes in the growth rate over time cause huge implications for the value of the company itself intrinsically. Now we know Palantir's government business started decelerating in Q4, which was the main concern, I'd say, coming out of Palantir's Q4 earnings release from 2021, the year-end report there. So we are going to have to see if the government side starts to pick up again and if that can spur the rest of the growth of the business. We'll be looking more into that in a moment. And then also earnings. So growth and earnings, obviously. Bottom line for Palantir, what are the earnings going to look like, especially in the wake of their SPAC investments that they hold being down even more this quarter in addition to the losses from Q4. Now we have these Q1 losses as well with the market being down. So I think a lot of investors are worried about the implications there in terms of what that's going to do to the EPS and, and everything else. So I think there is at least some of that that's being priced in. It remains to be seen how significant those losses will be, but I remain neutral to slightly bearish on that subject. And then much more on the stock-based compensation. This would be huge to get more insight on this, more data points equals more insight and that we can make better decisions off of. And then also profitability, the outlook sort of coming off the SBC, see if anything new changes there, as well as future product developments and more avenues, revenue streams for Palantir to diversify away from its core business and really open up going forward. So I think that's what matters, but what matters even more in a bigger picture view is making progress on making some of the world's best software, because that's really what it comes down to is having the best software, stuff that's valuable that you can use that confers value is very important. So I've laid out these six before. I laid this out on Dave Lee's channel, talked about it on here a bunch. Product offering, macro alignment, network effects, purposeful culture, growth by design, and future optionality. I think the key two ones for this quarter are going to be macro alignment, which will, of course, be stemming off of the macro challenges that we've seen the war between Russia and Ukraine, a lot of instability that Palantir's been predicting for a long time. I want to see how they're able to talk about that in the context of a quarterly release, see what they can do, and also in terms of the growth by design, that's what I'm referring to for the sales force. So we need to see what is their guidance going forward and how are they describing the product and growth rate they see towards the future and how are they describing that, what language are they using. Has the government side started to pick back up again? What can we get from those? So I think that's very important stuff I will be looking for. And so Alex Karp, it does not appear he's going to be on this conference call. He was on the last one. It appears that maybe they'll be doing a cadence of he's on the annual calls to answer questions and go over the year. But it looks like Palantir's back just to a regular webcast for the conference call on Monday. Now, one of the questions I asked in the Say Technologies platform is actually ranked second, so I think Palantir at least has seen it. Maybe we'll choose to answer it, and maybe we'll get something from that, but it's around Palantir's long-term future and mission, goals and plans, and if they have a master plan. So here you'll see an image that I made uh, for Dave Lee for analyzing Tesla, but this is something I've turned into something I'm looking for Palantir as well, which is they start out with an S-curve for Gotham towards the bottom. That's where they got started as the business, and then they use those learnings and that technology to parlay it into Foundry as well, which ultimately has a larger total addressable market, in my opinion. Palantir says they're about equal, the first two products there. I think Foundry's TAM is a lot larger. It's something that came later on in the timeline of the business. And then we're sort of searching as long-term investors for what's going to keep this growth going. We're very much at the start of Palantir's growth curves on everything, despite their age as a company. But it's very helpful to have a master plan that the employees are aware of, that shareholders that are, are aware of, and that the public can look in and see what's happening and see the long-term goals and see how the company is executing against them. So I think builders could be, or maybe it won't always end up being called that, but that mainstream, more mass market product for businesses to be able to utilize and, 
analyze, crunch all of their data and turn it into actionable insights as Palantir always talks about. That could be builders, it could be a consumer product. I'm not saying that Palantir needs this third or fourth layer and that's definitely not necessary for the next 10 years. They have a lot. I think they are really set for the medium term, but I think there could be something to be said about laying out a long-term master plan. So we'll see what they say on that. Excited to hear back. And then on the earnings expectations, I should have titled this revenue expectations, but what I'm expecting for revenue is $456 million for the quarter. This is above their guidance of $443 million for the quarter. So how did I get that? Well, it looks like if you average previous quarters, right now I'm just showing all the Q1s from every year, but if you average the previous quarters for 2021, the actual outperformance of guidance was about 3%. So I added 3% to the company's guidance for this quarter. You get about 456 million. Palantir has yet to meet and or not exceed guidance as I'll show you in a moment. So I'm expecting them to outperform the guidance once again. They're guiding for 2.3% quarter over quarter growth and that would put them 30% year over year growth. Again, I'm expecting much more than this. 460 million, for example, would correspond to 35% year over year growth in terms of comparing 2022 to 2021 for the first quarter. So 456 million is about 34% growth, which I think just sounds much better and, and really is much better than that 30%. Let me talk about that 30% a little more, but I just wanna show you a poll that I ran on Twitter. You can follow me at Palantir Vision. And I said, what do you think? So we got almost a thousand votes here. Poll's still open, but I just wanted to show this now. About a quarter of people just wanted to see the results. So if we take them out, we get the fewest number of votes going towards Palantir meeting or being less than guidance, which I think is pretty fair. And then my estimate of around 455 million got the second number of votes, but it looks like most people are expecting over $460 million in revenue, which would be a huge beat, especially if you look below, this is a screen. Uh, this is a screenshot I took from the Bloomberg terminal. Revenue consensus is 442.8 million, slightly below the guidance of the company. I think everyone just mainly on Wall Street is just following the guidance because that is what's easiest to do. We don't have any major outliers in terms of analysts. But towards number two there, once again, I was saying this is actually around, if not under, 30% year over year growth. So that's not great. Now, why is that not great? Well, Palantir has this goal of exceeding 30% growth through 2025. So if the year over year figures are under 30%, it's not gonna be a good look for meeting that. And you really have to meet guidance, especially in these sorts of environments. So once again, I'm expecting Palantir to outperform that figure be closer to the low to mid 30s in terms of year over year growth. And it's also worth noting that if you look at number three there, past surprises, Palantir has beat six out of six of the last revenue surprises, I guess you could say, expectations. So I'm expecting that once again. And then in terms of Wall Street consensus for a multi-year period, so this is through Palantir's 2025 guidance year, and they want to do 30% growth all the way through that. So if you look a few lines down, you'll see revenue and below that revenue growth year over year. So this is what Wall Street's expecting. Wall Street is expecting under 30% growth for 2022. I think Palantir is definitely going to exceed that, but it's very important to set expectations. This is what Wall Street is expecting. And then for 2023, once again, a very baseline figure at just 30%. So I think Palantir is going to do over $2 billion in revenue for 2022. And then you add another 30% to that. I think they could be doing 2.6 billion in 2023, somewhere around there, likely above that figure if they're able to maintain their guidance, which I consider their guidance, especially if you look at historical performance, to be fairly conservative. So I think Palantir really can beat those figures. And then if you extend forward for 2024 and 2025, they start to pick up the growth rate a little bit, 32%, 33% respectively. So bottom line here is I think Palantir is being underestimated by Wall Street. One of the it's one of the main reasons why I think Palantir stock is undervalued. And next up, we have Palantir's profitability. So I mentioned this is going to be something that's very key and it will continue to be key. You value a business based on its ability to earn profits for shareholders. So I took a look at this. This is also a screenshot I got from the Bloomberg terminal. This is net income, also known as earnings, 
also known as profits. So this is a gap figure, and we are looking at the year 2024 is when Wall Street expects Palantir to become profitable, to break even, and to start earning profits. While I don't think that's necessarily bearish pessimistic, because I think they could maybe on the best case side be breaking even in 2023, for the year. I think they might be able to break even in 2023, but it'll be a close call. So it looks like Wall Street's taking the other end of that and expecting perhaps profitability in 2024. But I bring this up because what matters is if Palantir is able to guide for we're expecting profitability sooner, that's a real catalyst for the stock as well as a catalyst for the future of the company and the business more holistically. And so here are some of my projections. I actually normalized Palantir's financials. I took out some quarters where it was against the trend outliers, I guess you could say. And all the way to the right, you'll see my 2022 Q1 earnings estimates. For this slide, we're looking at revenue. As I said, estimating about 456 million in revenue, continuing along this linear trend of about 29 million, of about adding $29 million per quarter. Now this trend will not last forever. It's gonna break at some point because compounding 30% really does start to have a tail to it, of course. But right now it looks like you could say, hey, let's just add 30 million in terms of projections for each quarter based on this linear trend. And then number two here is gross profit. So once again, that's what I'm expecting for Q1, for a Q1 estimate along this trend. You could say Palantir's adding about $25 million in gross profit each quarter. And in terms of R&D, you'll see the trend is pretty flat here. Although it does have a positive slope, I think we'll see it rise quarter over quarter. Uh, just mainly expecting more stock-based compensation to be attributed to this category, more investing in the business. Uh, definitely good to see, as long as it is not over the top. And then number four here, we're seeing a bit more steep of a line with SG&A, which is to be expected as your business grows. Usually your expenses do too. We'll take a look at what the operating income looks like in a moment. But SG&A, I think this is where predominantly the stock-based compensation comes into play. So I'm estimating for this quarter actually to be the highest quarter in terms of selling general and administrative expenses yet for Palantir, which I think is a very likely possibility. And then here are the operating expenses summed together, R&D, SG&A, everything like that. Up and to the right, like most of these charts and graphs that I have, there's not too much to say on the operating expenses side until we get more information on exactly how much stock-based compensation there was. And also keep in mind, they've been hiring lots of new sales personnel. And then on to the operating income. So this is interesting. So Palantir's operating income actually has improved in the last few quarters. We saw from Q2 of 2021, it improved drastically in Q3 and then in Q4. I'm estimating it to be about around that Q4 figure, if not a little less. So that's what I'm looking at for operating income. And then for net income, I think we could see a, perhaps a big hit for Palantir. We Again, I'm not including early quarters where they took huge expenses in terms of listing costs and all of that. But I think the SPACs will have a pretty big effect on the company's financials. And it's interesting because those are investments. So as long as Palantir isn't selling, it's not hurting the business because they don't need the money from those investments. But you do have to recognize those as essentially investment losses on a quarterly report so that investors understand the current status of the business. So all that to say, it looks like Palantir's net income is going to continue to trend down. I expect this likely to bottom at some point this year. So basically that wraps up what I'm thinking for this quarter. Again, we've only got a couple more days at this point. I really wanna hear from Palantir once again, high level, how they take intangible information turn it to actionable insights for alpha generation, which is Palantir's core business and what they earn from and what they're able to have a great future for doing. So more tidbits on all of this is definitely welcomed. And again, more on that evidence for alpha, the functional alpha, where it's literally helping companies and governments make functional improvements to their operations. Time-based alpha, where you're literally buying back time when working with Palantir to save time on certain processes. And then monetary, where you're not only saving in other aspects, but you're actually saving money to work with Palantir. And finally here, this is what it looks like if Palantir were to deviate from 30% 
up to 40%. Again, I expect Palantir to fall within these brackets, if you will. And we certainly could be looking at that four to $5 billion target for 2025. And potentially in the year 2030 could be north of or around or slightly below 25 billion, 20 billion in revenue. So the more information we can get on Palantir in a quarterly release, the better, the better, the more informed we will be in terms of the operations of the business. And that is very exciting for me as an investor. I hope it is for you too. We've got a lot more content for you coming until next time.